much as a golf nerd as I am, and you're loving this, I mean, you, you eat up what was just talked about right there because your short game will improve drastically. This was a game. Defend bogey, right? Mm -hmm. Then save par, right? Mm -hmm. Before you do Great. anything, make sure you defend bogey. That's a whole inch of turf right here. To get the ball to fly the same distance, you know what? I'm gonna try to land it 25 feet past that ball I just hit. And look at this. Hey, right now, guys. You know, in the motion of chipping, you know, I talk about three different hand actions because, you know, you hear commentators say he or she has great hands. Well, what does that mean? It means that they're able to use their hands differently for different shots, right? So basically, it's pretty simple. There's palm down, so. Bump and run, right? Because right, this, this hand very, is going to be very the club base. slight hinge. And I like what you said, keep the right hand. You, can't, you just can't have a good short game with your hand under the golf club. It can't happen, right? Yeah. So I got to have my hand here where my palm is sideways. So when I take the club back for a little chip shot, it's very, very slight. I'm careful because sometimes I tell people this and I'll see this and I hate that. Yeah, no. Right? It's very, very slight, a couple degrees. You guys understand, it's already a lot of it's preset. Yeah. He's already preset it's, it. It's so minimal. But what I don't want to do is rotate, right? So that's exactly. going to put too much loft on the golf club. So when I want to hit a low shot, I take it back. I really feel most of it happening from my chest, right? I take the club back, kind of like you said, preset. Now here's the big thing. When I come through, I got to make sure that I'm rotating through. My hand is staying exactly in the hmm. same position as it was at address. And I always tell people, hey, if I took a picture of your hands here and a picture of your hands here, they ought to look identical. It ought to be a mirror of the backswing. So what I don't like is when I see some people go like this and then yeah. they start leaning on it. Now the yep. grip's out here. You know, I saw um, a video of Scotty Scheffler who's talking about chipping and pitching. And he goes, one of the things that he always does, he tries to make sure the butt of the cloth club finishes in his left hip or his left pocket. I love that. Right? So you want to so, hear something funny about that? So Spieth did the same thing. I think he got it from Spieth. Bo used to do the same thing. It was a Texas thing. And you know what they used to joke about? They used to joke about perfect little Texas thing. They were holstering the gun. Ready for this? So they'd, they'd all chip. And they'd go. Holster the gun. They should you be able to holster it. the gun, right? Yeah. If they're out here, well, you can't yeah, holster the can't gun. Do it. You went back like this. Uh-oh. You know, you can't holster the gun. Yep, yep. So they always wanted to, boom, be able to holster the gun right there. Love that, yeah. right? So there's chipping. It's like, hey, get the handle forward, set the trail wrist a little bit, pivot through and make sure you hold that same position. Hold, like when you chip the golf ball, you need one third of the total distance of the shot. It has to be, you know, you got to chip the ball within that third. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I have a, a shot like this, like, you know, whatever, let's see, pace-wise, one, two, three, four, five, six, all right? And then it's, so if I'm carrying the ball safely on the green, right, that's six paces, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I would need 18 on this side to chip. You see what I'm saying? That's a great point. All right, so ultimately, this isn't a chip shot. So this is a pitch shot. Now, so if you're I, saying for the, for, if we were hitting the bump and run, the chip, yeah. the one that's gonna be within the first third, if we're landing it there, that hole would have to be 18 paces on yeah, the green approximately. At least, hit, at least right? To hit so, that shot, yeah. To hit an actual chip shot. So that back pin, for sure, that's a chip that's shot. That's a chip shot. Right? Yeah. But that pin is a pitch shot, right? Makes sense. And if I was down there below the bunker, it's now a lob shot. We're now two-thirds, one-third. That's right. a lob shot. Right, Absolutely. Right. So that makes sense. That's how I look. These kind of pins are set up nicely, so it's almost like... That could almost, if I was a little further down there, it would have to be a lob, right? It's a, it's a pitch the way it's set up now. That for sure is a pitch. That's a chip in the back pin, mm -hmm. right? Now, the other thing that I'm, I'm going to say, though, because one of the most important things is commitment. You can always pitch the golf ball. You can't always chip the golf ball, mm. right? So, you know, like even, even that back pin, I could hit a pitch shot to that back pin as far as technique goes. I just have to carry it further, right? Yes. So I can't always Beautiful. do it, do it, do it. <laughs> hey. See, so yeah, still pretty good, right? Yeah, we got but it. But anyway, my point is whether I hit that shot and pitch it or that shot and chip it, those are two different completely shots. And the big, the thing that's important here is commitment. Pick the shot you're committed to. But now I'm, I'm like, look, at, before you learn to do anything, you need to learn to pitch the golf ball because you can always pitch the ball. And even on a lob shot, like let's say I was down there. This one, have it here, see, it's for strategy's sake. Yeah, for strategy's sake. You can sake. still pitch it, guys. And if you're afraid to open that face up and put that ball way up and do a little bit of the extra magic you need that we're going to talk to you about here with that high shot, it's not bad strategy-wise to take the 10, 15-footer behind the hole. You're, it's so funny. We think and we literally think and I was just about to say, if I was down there 
and I had to get close to that pin, I land on a downslope, I would have to hit a lob shot, right? If I wanted to get close to the pin. Most amateurs would do a lot better just to hit a little bit of an open face pitch and take the 10 or 15 foot putt because of, right? And if you get close, guess what? It's almost by accident. And the yeah. funny thing is, I know my miss on that shot and it's for it to ride up the face just a little bit and come up a, fi a few feet yeah. short. And you're if in I'm front sitting of there bunker. just trying to carry it over that bunker and just try to finesse it over, guess what? My miss is plugged right in the face of that bunker, not yep. gonna happen. Or worse, you back up because you're trying to hit it really soft and easy. And, and by mistake, you know, you cut your head with a knife. <laughs> with the knife, there and you it is. You it into the bushes and now you made double, right? <laughs> exactly. So, you know, one of the phrases I like all the time is I used to say all the time, save par. Now I say defend bogey, mm, right? And mm. then save par, right? Mm. Before you do anything, make sure you defend bogey. Well, it's kind of like Nicholas said, you guys, and putts that pass ever, past 10 feet, remember the odds, you know, it's 40% with the best in the world in the PGA Tour from 10 feet. So my First goal from 10 feet and on is to not three putt. Yeah. And if it happens to go in along the way. Great. 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 All right, so, so now we've talked about a little bit about strategy. Pitch is the most important thing. Let's okay. talk about pitching. So pitching is really simple. Like I love narrow stance. I cannot, I don't like wide stances because wide stances encourage transfer of yep. weight, right? So whether it's six inches or it's really close, keep your feet close together. So if I set the shaft, so here's a 60 degree uh, lob wedge. I'm setting the shaft 90 degrees to the ground. I'm standing at the handle, so the handle's still pointing just left of my center. My hands basically are at my center. I do like to have my body slightly open. In, in the slightly open, you guys, think about it. We talk about presetting impact position as much as possible. We're not gonna be square at the point of impact. Right. So a little bit of preset rotation already helps you Gets get back to the spot, point your spot. Right. Yeah, exactly. Now, the big key here is understanding the difference in the hand action. Yes. So hand action in the chip shot was my palm is basically staying toward the ball. Okay, right? so like this. Exactly, there's chip. Now here's pitch, right? So basically, as I take the club back, I need to keep loft on the face. So I've set a little more lofted address. It's slightly open now. I keep loft on the face. So my hand actually is going from here to having some rotation, mm -hmm. right? And so now I've got loft on the face, right? So I like to, if it was halfway back, it, of course, I can hit a really short, like I'm just going to get this on the front of green and hit a little tiny pitch, right? So there's a tiny mm -hmm. pitch. So the, the leading edge wouldn't have got to 90 there, mm -hmm. right? It only got to here because I only took it back that far. Mm -hmm. So my length of my backswing is controlling how far I'm going to carry the ball. Now, if I was taking it further, you know, that's where you would see leading edge at right angles to the ground. So mm -hmm. here's chipping, here's pitching, right? And so whatever I do in the backswing, so let's say I'm taking it back where it's, the leading edge is 90 degrees to the ground. Well, then... As I come through, it ought to be 90 degrees to the ground on the mm, other side that. if it's a pitch. I love that. Right? So whatever I've done here, I should have a mirror of back here. Right? So there's pitching. And then there's lob. Right? So if I truly want to hit a lob, right, I'm going to bring the handle back. I'm going to put a little more loft on the face. So here's, here's chipping, here's pitching, here's lob. Notice this. This is really important to me. The club head is basically in the same position in relation to my body. It's not like... I've got the club out, you know, people sawing across it. Like, I've got the club in front of my body. I'm just changing the face position Absolutely. through the rotation, right? Their way, it's always in front of my body, one more common denominator. And then, again, whatever I've done in the backswing, right, I need to do on the forward swing. So here's something I've done with people. I've taken a magic marker and I draw a couple little dots on the mm. face. And I say, look it, if you want to hit a lob or a bunker shot, I want the eyes to look mm. at you, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm hitting a chip, I want the eyes to look at the golf ball. Mm -hmm. If I'm hitting a lob, the eyes are looking Love at me, that. right? And now here's what's really critical about this. You got to get rid of it, meaning that I got to keep those eyes looking at me the whole time, right? Yes. So to do that, I have to go this way. So if I'm going to hit a true lob, I'm going to let that club release, right? And yeah. literally fold it up like this. And so those eyes would be looking at me the whole time, right? Absolutely. So... You know, there's the, it's easy. Stand That's the, the handle. actual of what actually happens with the best in the world when they hit this golf shot. Yeah. Now, some of you are going to already be players that, yes, you can take that backswing thought all day. And you understand that you already naturally are this golfer. Well, Todd would tell you one thing. A lot of times the people who over flip and they're thinking, God, I can't think of that. Otherwise, I'm going to flip it too much. No, no. That's because they're not what? They're not rotating. They're just stalling out and using a lot of their hands. Well, here's, here's, that's what, a big problem. here's what this comes down to. 
the bottom of the golf swing, 100% of the time, is wherever this is. So if you go to release the club, like we talk about getting rid of it, and I do that properly, but yep. I went backwards, yep. it's going to bottom out early. Absolutely. And so as long as I keep my body rotating and going to the left, right, and not backing up, I can get is. rid of the club all day because I'm going this way. So, like, guys, I would normally play my, my, my high flop shot, like, right here. This is where I normally would play it. Okay? Came off nice there. Now, watch. He'd have me put it up there, and watch what my upper body would have to do. And what's funny is, guess what? That was even higher, softer than the one I just hit. Yeah, I and, did. you know, and, and that's, you know, circumstances, you guys. Think about it. You get some shots that are going to just sit down in that lie right there. That's not conducive to opening the face and exposing the leading edge in the middle of, of that golf ball. You know, that's where the, our golfers, you know, we're, we're hitting off of a normal lie right now, but you need to make decisions based upon what the lie gives you. You know, one thing that I always look at, Kev, get a, come, come get an up close of this one right here and come get an up close of this one right here, okay? One, one ball right here has nothing in between the back of it and my club face. So let's just say I'm hitting a little high soft shot right here with my little one-two tempo. I take it back to pocket high, I go back through, okay, that ball flew 30 feet. You guys, if you put a marshmallow in between the golf ball and my club face, and I make the same swing, that 30-foot pitch right there, same swing, is going right there. So one thing that was cool that I did with Travis Vick last year at the US Open so we're at the country club at Brookline. I'm his caddy, but also coach. So that's kind of interesting. I know you've had a chance to yeah, do that I've yourself. That. Yep. yep. So what's interesting was we would look at the lie. We'd analyze it. We'd read it. And I look at him and I go, hey, bud, I know you need to land it right there. But I want you to give me a shot that would fly at 40 feet off of a normal lie. That's how we gauged what would happen. And what was so cool about that is we practiced that week around the edges of greens and put ourselves in those situations to where there was a bunch of grass in between the club and the ball. And what it prevented was, because a lot of people struggle from this, they get in those lies and they get the one that over compresses. And then they get the one that comes out dead with nothing. What we found was that because that happens a lot because the jamming or the deselling, you know, the changing in rhythm. We always kept our rhythm the same, changed the length of our back strength to get a certain distance and understood that, okay, with that situation there, in order to land the ball seven feet, I need to feel like I'm flying it three times farther. So we actually worked that equation out in our head and we did things like that to prepare for that tournament, which I thought was really cool. And it worked like a charm. I would literally go up and say, Trav, you need to land that ball right here. But hey, buddy, hey, listen, just pretend, pretend like you're flying that ball right here. And I'd be like past the hole sometimes. And then you know what was cool? He didn't take a hard jammy swing at it. He took his normal swing. smooth swing and the ball would just fluff out six feet in front of us, and he'd look at me like, man, that worked. And i go, yeah, you know, but that was something that, I'm just giving an example of reading your lie, okay? So it's important, you guys, in order to get better at chipping, you know, one thing that, that I did, I took what Todd taught me. I had shots, I had a low shot, I had a pitch, I had a high shot, but I knew what it was gonna take to hit it off the tight lie, out of the rough. I knew how much swing I needed to take right here, you know, right here to get this ball to land near the hole. Okay, it was here and it was here. All right, that was approximately pocket high. Well, watch this. I, I, you know, to get that's, that's, grain in, that's grain growing into me. That's a whole inch of turf right here. To get the ball to fly the same distance, you know what? I'm going to try to land it 25 feet past that ball I just hit. And look at this. Hey, guys, that was pretty ridiculous right there, man. <laughs> it's funny how we do that when we're like demonstrating. It's, it's so simple. Right? So simple when we're you know, talking. I, here's something I yeah. would observe that, and again, in, in Chicago, got to teach people, I would say pitching out of the rough. Like the ball's down, you can't really chip it. You got to pitch it, meaning you got to. So, you know, I would say, look at, if I have a tight lie, I want the plane to land, right? The plane's going to come in shallow and land. If I got a steep lie, I got to come in a little bit steeper, right? It's got to crash. And so ultimately, when you think about it, you know, I have three variables going on in the mm. backswing. I could good. use my pivot, right? That's a shallower. I could use my arms. It's kind of middle ground. And I could use my wrist. Pivot's here. Right. A little shallower. Right. So if I got a tight wrist line, I'm going to chip the Vertical. ball. Yep. I'm going to use my, my body, right? 
And then when I pitch the ball, I'm going to use more of my arms. Okay. Now, what's interesting when I when the ball's down on the rough, I yeah. would say yeah, it's yeah. still a pitch. But now I'm going to add a little bit of wrist hinge, right? That gets the club coming up higher and further mm. for more speed. But keep this in mind. If you use your wrist in the backswing, you better get rid of it, right? So I'm coming down st steeper, sharper, but I got to release the golf club with loft on the face. So if I hinge it more, I'm going to release it more. I'm going to get rid of it, and I'm going to turn through. So it's kind of like a sense of setting the wrist, releasing the club, and in the rough, I think this is really critical. Mm. You got to have a firmer grip pressure at impact. Yes. And so I always teach people increasing grip pressure. And what I mean by that, so often you hear, hold the club like a live bird. Well, that's good, except when the club accelerates, the bird's going to fly out of your hands. So ultimately, as I'm getting down, especially in rough and there's resistance, and this is the same in the bunker, you better start to squeeze the grip a little bit and firm up. I love that, up, Todd. Right? I love that. So firm up a little bit. So a lot of times, you know, hinge, you know, you hear Phil Mickelson say hinge and hold. Well, actually, I think there's a release before there's a hold. Yes. So I would say hinge, release, and hold. It's right here, right? right? It's right here. So there's it's a right firmness here. that happens at the it's bottom. Right, exactly. Right. Now, so, so that's how I would handle rock. I love what he just said, by the way. That's one tip I always give my players. You know, we're getting ready to go to a U.S. Amateur at Cherry Hills. You get that long USGA rough. I've always been Brit big on especially the lead hand, getting a little extra squeeze into that hand. And that's something that I, I, I really think is important. You know, not only does it really, it just stabilizes that club through that tough grass. And it just, it's not the same light grip that you can use off of a tight lie or off the fairway Yeah, there's lie. resistance. So, but it, what's interesting, that's why the way I say it, increasing grip pressure, meaning that, I, I think this is a big problem with a lot of amateurs. A lot of amateurs have a decreasing grip pressure. In other mm. words, they start with too much tension in their hand. And by the time they're hitting it, they're, in, mm. or they're mm. decreasing the grip pressure. So... Let's say I'm starting with a, on a scale of one to 10 at a three, okay. okay? But then by the time that club starts hitting the grass, I'm all the way to a seven. So hmm. if I start at a seven or an eight, and I, have to, I have nowhere to go, I can't increase. And you, you know, you're not either gonna, you're not gonna start at seven and just stay there. That'd be wooden and mechanical. So I think if you're, if you're really feeling the club head kind of a little relaxed and hinged, and then as you come down, increase the grip pressure through impact. It'll stabilize in the rough or the sand. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Much as a golf nerd as I am, and you're loving this, I mean, you, you eat up what was just talked about right there because your short game will improve drastically. This was a game changer for me at a young age. I was lucky. My dad found Todd on the, on the golf channel, and my dad happened to be a very educated golfer himself and just said, I love everything this, everything this guy's saying. He goes, I'm taking my kid to go see him. And, uh, and, and, and I'll never forget meeting you in the desert that time. And, the relationship I became. It was a big horn. Was that big horn? Was that big horn? Yeah, you were. You were. Yeah. yeah how about that? And no, never forget that. And uh, and then from there, it led to me coming out to visit you in Chicago, and that was cool because I had family ties in Chicago. Mom and you know, dad, dad. Mom and dad lived there, but dad was from there with his brothers, and right, right. family moved out from Chicago. And um, Cubs. Some of the Cubs fan. Black you know, we go to Cubs fan. Yeah, Used yeah. to go to Navy Pier with the family. Right. Right. So it was. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And I. Uh, you know, so just just the, the journey and having a chance to be here with him today is it's a it's a privilege, man. It's yeah. Just, uh, yeah, yeah. Bring it in, dude. Man. Yeah, it's all good. It's good, real good. Yeah, what a day. Awesome. At Forzac Golf, we take a lot of pride in having developed some of the best and most consistent golf swings on the planet. We do this through simplicity. Our full swing masterclass will take you on a step by step, easy to understand process on how to get your golf swing better than ever. Join the many before you who've utilized our Full Swing Masterclass to take their games to the next level and beyond.